On this week's episode at Nutrition's My Life, we're talking all things sleep, because if you're wanting to improve your weight, if you're wanting to um, have more energy, improve your hormones, just overall feel better, have your hair stop falling out, um, not be so bloated all the time, whatever your issue is, if you're not sleeping well, your body doesn't have the ability to repair itself. Um, it's, it's like you're stuck in your fight or flight response when you are not sleeping really well. Um, and so we're going to go over kind of what happens when you don't sleep well and 12 ways to actually improve your sleep. And you can start doing that even tonight. So, um, let's get a pen and paper, get ready to go because this is a lot of juicy material. And I will tell you that some of these are like golden nuggets by themselves, but like with anything with health, you to think about like your body as like this puzzle piece. Right. And so if you try one thing and you're like, mm, that didn't fully work for me, keep adding more puzzle pieces until your body's like, that's what I needed. That's what I needed to help myself, um, sleep better. And again, this, this goes to, if you're waking up in the middle of the night, if you are the person that's having trouble falling asleep, or if you're the one that's like, Hey, I woke, I slept eight hours, but I still don't feel like I slept really well. This is, this is going to be super helpful for you. So what we're trying to do here is figure out like, okay, why, why are we having some issues falling asleep? What are those things that are blocking you and having some issues? And so some of what I'm going to be going over are going to be the things that could be causing that, that issue in you. And the other things are going to be like, okay, this is the action steps to actually start doing. So if you're struggling with your, um, your sleep, the first thing that I want you to start looking at is, um, are, are you having blood sugar dysregulation. And so what I, what I mean by blood sugar dysregulation is, um, you're skipping meals. You are so stressed, um, that your blood sugar dysregulation is waking you up in the middle of the night. So, um, if you're having the, uh, I wake up in the middle of the night issue, or you feel like towards the end of the day, you get lots of like energy. There could be a blood sugar dysregulation and a cortisol dysfunction kind of going on. And so when we're talking about the blood sugar dysregulation, what we're trying to do is make sure that we're eating consistently throughout the day. And it does matter what you're eating. I have had people like uh, just eat a salad and skip breakfast, right? They're not getting any carbs for the first half of the day. And then, um, I've had people that have had, are eating baby food or, um, they've, you know, just are, they're eating fine, but it's, it's like short, little more, more protein and very, very little carb. Um, if we have some blood sugar dysregulation while we're trying to like, um, uh, be our healthiest version, uh, that, that promotes more inflammation, which kind of goes into my number two, which is anti-inflammatory. Um, but before we dive into anti-inflammatory, we still need to touch base more on that blood sugar dysregulation. So let's say that you're the person that like you go to sleep just fine, but like at two, three in the morning, you wake up. One thing that we can do is like I said, that can be either a cortisol issue or a blood sugar issue. So if it is a blood sugar issue, um, I want you to start to reflect on what did I eat, um, at, at dinner time? Did I do too much throughout the day and did not give myself enough carbohydrates? Did I do low, 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 low carbs all, all day. And even though I didn't exert myself too much, if you didn't have enough of that fuel to put into the gas tank here, your body's going to wake up. Um, because your body's gonna be like, Hey, Nicole, you didn't give me enough blood sugars. Don't worry. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to shoot out that, that stored glycogen in your liver and in your muscles. And that usually like, um, how do we end up getting that release? through cortisol, right? So our body's like, then we like get jolted up and you're like, why am I awake? Some people think, oh, I might, I'm, I wake up because of my, um, I have to pee at night. But in sometimes um, I have found with my clients that those that wake up to pee at night also are the people that have that blood sugar dysregulation. So we need to make sure that we're keeping those blood sugars stable. And we've talked about that in depth in multiple um, episodes here, but just as a quick reminder, um, we do want complex carbs at most of your meals, if not all of them. Um, we do want to make sure that if you're having a carbohydrate, you have a protein and or fat source with it. Those two little, like making sure that we have those complex carbs and a source of protein and fat attached to it 
can make sure that we're going to have more steady blood sugars after we eat versus this like big rise and fall. So let's dive into uh, number two, tip number two to help you sleep better is actually anti-inflammatory foods. So anti-inflammatory foods include your omega-3 fatty acids. These um, are like your nuts, seeds, olives, uh, avocado, olive oil, avocado oil, uh, fatty fish, um, grass-fed beef, all of those are going to help out with reducing inflammation due to those omega-3 fatty acid um, content and even, even some omega-6 fatty acids as well. We want that ratio, right? We want that perfect ratio because omega-6 is not inflammatory. It's when the ratio is off. Uh, another thing that's helpful for anti-inflammatory foods, um, are spices like your turmeric, your ginger, your cinnamon. This is why I encourage most of my clients to drink a turmeric latte in the morning. We have to tackle this inflammation with multiple angles here. We're going to have that omega-3 fatty acids. We're going to have the spices, and then we're going to bring in tons of antioxidants and where are the antioxidants found in? Our fruits, veggies, um, are the main sources of it. You know, we get a little bit, um, and nuts and, and seeds and legumes and stuff like that. But the majority that we're going to get is going to be those deep, rich colors and every color provides you with a different antioxidant. So that is including your cauliflower, your whites. Um, but there are more that are more potent, right? This is why I've recently done a video on my TikTok about blueberries and how amazing blueberries are because they're one of the most potent sources of antioxidants out there, just like beets are. They're not my favorite, but I know that they're super important for us to, to help out. Um, and so antioxidants help out with reducing inflammation and they do it in multiple ways. So they can help out with reducing inflammation by protecting the cells um, and reversing any damage. But then they also actually help feed and um, help out with repopulation of that microflora, that beneficial bacteria that's in our, in our digestive tract. And if we have better gut health, then that like is a cascading event of, of many positive things that happens within the body. So then number three that we want to do, and when I talk about anti-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory foods, y'all, please make sure that it is not just, Oh, I got it once a day. This is a multiple things all throughout the day. I usually tell my clients to at least aim for one source of healthy fats at every meal and snack. So I do want to put that out there because so I've, I've come across people who are like, well, I started incorporating some things and I still don't feel different. And I'm like, well, it could just be that you have this like massive, like stormy water, right. Of inflammation. And you toss in a little bit of a pebble, your body's not going to see that ripple effect, right. That, that ripple effect doesn't, isn't there because there's so much inflammation, but if we throw in a boulder <laughs> into that infl inflammatory, um, waters that are just like crazy going right then we can start seeing that ripple effect. So we do have to make sure like the volume of what you're doing does matter. The third thing are melatonin rich foods. Um, and melatonin rich foods does uh, multiple things for us. So if we're eating it throughout the day, melatonin actually has been shown to also repopulate that microflora, those healthy bacteria in our gut. Um, but then also melatonin, as we know, cause a really side effect, like little skirt, there's more melatonin in our digestive tract than anywhere else in our body. Crazy, right? It's kind of cool, right? I just, I don't know. But the melatonin that we get in our digestive tract does not help us sleep. It has a different role. <laughs> but the melatonin and rich foods, um, I usually tell my clients, like, grab some cherries and um, some nuts. Um, walnuts contain some melatonin. Pistachios have the highest amount. Cashews have some. Um, and we can get up with some fatty fish and some bananas and everything out there as well. So there are foods that naturally contain it. So sometimes I'm like, hey, if you want like a, a sweet snack at night, grab some. I, I usually, I choose frozen cherries more often. Cause I, I think they, they just delicious once they like partially like thought out, um, mix it with a little bit of chocolate chips and for some magnesium. And then you get, um, the nuts and everything for more melatonin. It's just a simple, well-balanced nighttime snack that allows you to get that sweet helping out with, um, stabilizing your blood sugars because you added those nuts in there. Um, and it just, it, it's delicious. Trust me. <laughs> then number four, we want to actually start our, um, our, our nighttime routine in the morning. And you're like, what? I don't need to do that. But actually, if we can get that morning sun, that morning sun actually helps out with our circadian rhythm. So that circadian rhythm is what our, it's our, our internal clock, right? So it can actually help release the melatonin 18 late, um, 18 hours later. And just so you know, melatonin, melatonin's role is to just to cool the body off. 
Okay. So it's not going to help you sleep longer. And if you're the person that wakes up in the middle of the night, don't, don't go waste taking melatonin. It's only going to help you if you have trouble falling asleep. Okay. And with that said, there's been lots of studies that show that we don't want to go above five milligrams of melatonin. Cause that does increase our risk of dementia and other neurodige um, neurodegenerative diseases, uh, later on in life. So we do want to be aware of that just like any other sleep meds and even, um, long-term use of Benadryl and stuff like that increases your risk of like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. So we got to be careful about that. And that's why I, I do work with a good handful of my clients, like if they're on sleep meds to try to find a way we work with a doctor to come off on those medic medications. So that way we can find a natural alternative route. So that way we don't have those issues later on, because I want you to remember your today's tomorrow. So Magnesium rich foods are another thing that we can start to incorporate throughout the day, but also, um, also through at, at night as well. Um, magnesium, um, rich foods like your pumpkin seeds, cashews, um, mushrooms, avocados. Um, there's tons of foods that contain magnesium. And so we can start to incorporate these foods and a really cool side note, majority of the healthy fats that you're going to eat also have magnesium in them. So if you can aim for those healthy fats, you're automatically going to be improving your, uh, uh magnesium intake. And our bodies have over 300, 300 processes that require magnesium. So it's a, it's a, we burn through that, especially if you're stressed or you're not sleeping well, right. You have high anxiety, you're burning through your magnesium, just like you're burning through your omega-3 fatty acids, Epsom, Epsom salt baths. I try to take three baths a week because <laughs> I have anxiety. Right. Um, but if, if I, what I'm trying to do here is get ahead of my anxiety. And I'm also trying to do like, Oh crap. If I, if I didn't get ahead of my anxiety, I need to make sure that I have something to help kind of calm and bring me down. And it does show about like 20 minutes of a soak is what you're needing. Um, I did have a gentleman one time. Um, he was like, I don't do baths, but I could soak my feet while I'm at work. Um, he worked from home. And so he would just get a little basin tub and put some Epsom salt in there with some water. And he would just soak his feet before, um, or while he was working and that helped out tremendously, he was very OCD. So it was a very nice thing to help kind of calm him down in addition to the magnesium supplements. So some people do need all three magnesium rich foods, Epsom salt baths, and a magnesium supplement. Um, the, uh, seventh, uh, tip to help you improve your sleep tonight is reducing or removing all of your deep sleep disruptors. So this is like, if you're having caffeine afternoon, so you say you even have just like a, a sweet tea or a Dr. Pepper, or maybe you do need that energy drink, or maybe you do need a second cup of coffee, but it's decaf. If it's afternoon, that can definitely disrupt your deep sleep. So be aware of the, the amount of caffeine that you have in general. And then also anytime afternoon, um, another deep sleep disruptor, what you're watching me on right now. <laughs> Or if you're listening to me, what you, what uh, it's any blue light, any blue light, any blue light is going to be a deep sleep disruptor. So some people that work on their computers all throughout the day actually would benefit from having um, it built into their prescription glasses or grabbing a pair of blue light canceling glasses, or um, at minimum wearing it at night when you're watching TV with the family or reading on your Kindle, whatever it may be. We do need to be aware that th that um, blue light is going to disrupt your brain and thinking that it is actually sunlight out there. And so that melatonin won't get released. So your body temperature will stay the same. So we want to make sure that we put those blue light canceling glasses on. And there's been something that I have seen with my clients as I talk to about, um, this to them, um, they'll be like, oh yeah, well, I turn it down on my phone, right? I turn on um, the blue light on my phone and, and as I have the night, it still is, um, giving you some blue light. So we're going to be trying to aim for, and if you're searching for those glasses that are like the 90% or more blue light canceling. So definitely do your research when you're grabbing those, because just a little bit is not going to be enough for that, um, blue light to like get away. And I will tell you, um, <laughs> If you I can't tell, I get some, like I get, I get clients like all over, right. Um, all over the spectrum, as far as like OCD, um, you know, anxiety, thyroid, insomnia, like all over the place. I do mostly, um, uh, specialize in thyroid, but I have had a handful of OCD and my OCD clients, this tends to be, or my very, very high anxiety 
the blue light canceling, do not underestimate that. Do not underestimate that. That has been, I have heard, I don't know how many times. Wow. I wish I would have gotten some glasses sooner. Holy crap. I slept for six hours straight for the first time, or I slept seven or eight hours straight for the first time. I feel so much better just with some blue light canceling glasses. I typically wear them all the time when I'm working, except for when I'm doing stuff like this. Um, so, um, and then the last thing is alcohol. If you have alcohol too close to bedtime, that's going to be a deep sleep, deep sleep disruptor. So I tell my clients, like, I, I don't care if you have some, I do care if you the volume, if you have an excessive amount, but if you're having a glass of wine or a beer or whiskey, whatever, every once in a while, that's totally fine to do, but I want to make sure that you're doing it earlier on enough in the day. Um, so that way it doesn't, um, disrupt your sleep. And so when I mean earlier in, enough in the day, I'm like, while you're cooking dinner, or, um, I like to say around five or six or latest seven, so that we have a couple hours of that alcohol to metabolize out of your body before you, you go to bed. Number eight, um, is the journaling. Sometimes what happens is that we have so much anxiety or so much stress that everything is just kind of like swirling around in our head. Right. And so if it's swirling around in our head, we got to get that shit out, <laughs> get it out, but we want to do it on pen and paper, pencil and paper or something. We don't get on your Kindle or your phone and make a list or type out something on your computer. There's science behind that transferring that negative energy out onto that paper. Um, and so this can be journaling in general. Um, this can be just writing your to-do list for tomorrow. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll do a kind of way of like manifesting my sleep and I'll say, and I'll write out, I am so happy and grateful now that so I'm bringing what I want to the present. So I'm so grateful and happy now that sleep comes to me with ease. I'm so happy and grateful now that I woke up feeling refreshed, right? And then after a couple like of sentences of that, um, I'm so grateful and, um, and, and bring all of that to me within like a couple of minutes, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Mm, done, done, tired. So it really is super helpful because we want to get all of that stuff that's swirling out of your head, dump it out. We don't need to worry about it anymore, right? Get it out onto paper. So that way it's, you don't have to have that like worrying about you. And talk about uh, worrying. Number nine is actually stress reducing tools or stress reducing habits throughout the day. If we think about um, kind of this tags back to actually number one um, with the blood sugar dysregulation is um, sometimes what happens is, is that we're so stressed, right? We're so, so stressed that our cortisol is kind of like whoop, switched backwards where we, it should be highest in the morning because cortisol is actually what wakes us up in the morning. Um, but it should be at the, the highest in the morning, but for so many people that are struggling with their sleep, especially those that have that two to three or four o'clock, like AM wake up call, you're having your cortisol highest is actually right before bed or at night. And that's why you might be like, I just feel like, I don't know why I'm so tired, but my brain just seems like it's on, like my body's exhausted, but my brain's like, Nope, you're not sleeping. <laughs> that's not going to happen. So what we need to do is realize, Hey, I have, I have my, my cortisol is all screwed up. So I, it takes a while to do this, but if we can start doing more stress reducing tools throughout the day, it's going to have a better chance of having your cortisol and your body beating like, nope, nope. She's not in freak out mode right now. I don't need to like have that burst of, of cortisol, that, that energy, because any little bit of, oh my gosh, that like frustrating me, right? Like, so this morning, like total perfect example right here this morning. Um, I, yesterday I had sinus, like, like issues, like crazy. My face just like pff, went inflamed. And I was like, not very helpful for the second half of the day. It was not pretty. I gardened yesterday. I mean, my car is completely covered in yellow pollen. It is nasty out right now with that cedar. So I was kind of like, I'm not doing much. Like my husband and kids did um, the dishes and I get I'm downstairs this morning and I'm like, why are all these dirty dishes like actually in the drying rack where the clean dishes should be. And I was so like, like, okay, like, I know that's not right. This like, okay. So what did I do? So I took a second to be like, <sighs> okay. I, I voiced my like, Hey guys, like, like what happened here? What's going on. Right. Um, we want to make sure that we, this is the drying racks only for clean dishes. Um, and just kind of re talking about it. My husband comes up and he's like, he had just woken up and I had been up for a while. And he was like, 
um, I, man, I don't want to be criticized, um, and, and have you all angry at us. And I'm like, I'm not angry. I'm simply saying that, okay, why did this happen? And so he initially went, oh, right. Got really big, but I stayed calm. And I'm like, and I voice, I'm not upset. I'm frustrated. I'm concerned that, Hey, if I take a day off, then, <laughs> then nothing happens. Right. And so I just wanted to say, okay, so why did this happen? Why did it get there? And I started investigating and figuring out, well, there's so, there was too many dishes in the sink. So the kids didn't have space to like wash and, and, and do stuff and rinse some of the things out. So they just rinsed and put it over there, rinse and put it over there. I mean, they're, they're seven and nine. So, um, it was a learning, uh, um, like time for that. I could have easily just been like, guys, I can't take off like at all. And I can't have any time for myself. And Right. They, they thought that I was upset um, because I voiced like, Hey, like I want to make sure that the next time y'all do something, let's make sure the sink gets emptied out a little bit to allow for space for you to do that. Right. So I stayed calm and then it ended up everyone being okay. But old of me would have been like, guys, right. And I would have just gotten so upset so bad. And it would have just been a hot mess and it wouldn't have been helpful. But what would have happened if I would have gotten upset that cortisol would have gotten big, right? That big, big flame would have like gone off inside of me. And I would have had multiple hours of trying to figure out how to regulate myself back down. I would have done some things to help out, but I still wouldn't have been able to be in this nice, calm state that I'm in right now. So that deep breath, that realizing and taking a step back and not, instead of just jumping into something allowed and saved my body from that, whoosh, that big, big, I call it my anxiety and stress flame and doing these little things. It doesn't seem like that big issue, right? Um, not a big issue, but what ends up happening is those little things, those little successes that you end up having, um, tend to actually end up being super helpful for you, um, in the long run. Okay. So do some jumping up and down some dance, put an ice pack on your chest, go outside for a quick walk do some gratitude, something along those lines. What we need to do is anytime you see yourself getting like frustrated or flustered, visualize that, that stress or anxiety flame going off inside of you, do something to kind of bring you back down to baseline and be like, all right, I just got to shake it off. Right. Just got to do something, jump up and down. Um, and then I can like now go on with my day, doing these little things, catching yourselves, celebrate them, those are going to have such a big impact on your sleep. And you're like, that's so weird. Me talking about like someone getting upset with dishes and stuff like that. It really does. It really does. So, um, having those stress reducing tools throughout the day are going to be what's going to help bring you to that cortisol regulation again. Number 10, 11, 12 are very like short and sweet. So we'll kind of get off all over that. So number 10 is brown noise, um, especially for people that have anxiety or um, they're neurodivergent. A lot of times we need our brains to have something else in the background. So we don't have thoughts just kind of going off um, like, like crazy. So brown noise has actually been super helpful. A lot of people use white noise. Um, um, either or is great. I've found that brown noise tends to be a little bit better put some brown, just go on YouTube go, and it has eight hours worth of, um, uh, brown noise for free. And you you're able to do that. Um, just fine. This one might be a little scary for some people and definitely talk to your doctor before doing, doing this. Um, but mouth taping, I tape my mouth now when I sleep. That's crazy, right? Um, but I am so glad I do because I have um, a deviated septum. I had broken my nose at some point in my life. I don't know when, but apparently I did when I had an x-ray taken it something sticking out. So the right side of my face, which is always my migraine side, because I don't get enough oxygen there, um, is it, it can like, so it, over the years I have like become a, a mouth breather. Um, and that was something I actually, from a young age, I always had mouth breather, mouth breather, mouth breather. Right. And so if we can close our mouth while we are sleeping, that's going to force more oxygen, um, into our nose, which then where our bodies then produce nitric oxide with that, which then helps out with brain health and all this other stuff. So if we can start to breathe through our nose more often, we're going to have a better chance of actually, um, you know, 
sleeping better and actually having that nice, deep restorative sleep. So definitely go look into it. Many, I even asked my dentist and he was like, Oh no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's a safe thing, but the one I get, it's like, it's called myotape. So it tapes around my out, outside. So I can still open up. I can still drink through it. Um, and so it is a safe thing for, for me. So definitely, like I said, go, go talk to um, your doctor about it or go look into more of that mouth taping. It is, it's, it's been super helpful for me to get a good deep sleep. And the last thing um, that's been super helpful for the people that are more stressed and have more anxiety, especially the neurotypicals or um, uh, not the neurodivergent, I don't know why I said the neurotypicals, weighted blanket. Get yourself a freaking weighted blanket. It is amazing, amazing for those anxiety warriors. So if you are the one that's like struggling to fall asleep um, and stay asleep, a weighted blanket is like where it's at. So those are the best 12 tips for improving your sleep tonight. Um, and they are, like I said, this is something that if you're struggling with your health without seeing, you know, if you have massive amount of stress, if you have the weight that's not coming off, uh, maybe your periods are like horrible. You have really bad digestive issues, complete exhaustion. Start with your sleep. If we can get into a better deep sleep, you're going to feel so much better, so much better. So review those 12 tools and start incorporating them, find out your own routines and how, how it works best for you. And then continue with it. Like I said earlier on, if you don't feel like, okay, this is working for me, keep adding these tools. I use all of these tools, all of them, all of them. And that's how I'm able to sleep better. I used to say, I'll, I'll sleep when I'm dead. I'll sleep when I'm dead. I never used to get good quality sleep because it always eluded me. And this is something from a young, young child. Like I was the hardest to fall asleep. I would always wake up if like mom would check on me. Right. I would just like hear everything. I would like be alert. I was always the first person downstairs in the morning watching cartoons by myself. Um, sleep has been something that I struggled with majority of my life. So if you need, if, if that sounds like you, keep adding in more supportive tools, more supportive tools. I, th I think the biggest thing that I see as the biggest um, inhibiting factor for so many people with their health is the frequent removal of shit. Like, excuse my language, but stop removing stuff and being like, I failed at that. I failed at that. It's not that you're failing. It's that your body still needs more tools. So keep doing some of those things that feel good for you, that are helpful for you, and then bring in more um, tools to help out. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this week's episode at nutrition's my life. Like I said, um, uh, we're going to be diving into a lot of, um, more helpful topics. So please follow, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, and I will be back for another episode of nutrition's my life. Take care y'all.